Guten and Abend, es freut mich, dass ihr eingeschaltet habt, an diesem right Lagerfeuer, so, an this is basically a virtual Zeit chat wie diese Art von fire. Programmpunkt um, hier heißt bei unserem Kongress. And yeah, und, uh, it's, it's, it's a pleasure and an honor Andreas to Eschbach already see Andreas Eschbach. Sehen in diesem Fenster, weil also I'm an audiobook junkie, junkie and, and he, und Andreas Eschbach hat mich he is one of the ones who started, who gave me my first shot basically. Last of his seine Art, kind was allem total and geil war. Also hier schon mal Empfehlung. Ausgebrannt, so burnt out about the oil Bereich. topic. Stelle, so yes, props, props, props. I'm really happy. I hope you can tell. And I'm, I'm really excited. I, I can't translate how excited it is, how much excitement there is. So yeah, let me hand over to the moderation, Jinx. Have fun. And I am really looking forward to the Q&A. Ja, auf die yes, Frage, die looking mich forward to the um, Q&A. Ja, also wir haben and we have Andreas Eschbach today. Und, uh, and there will be a short reading. Eine Lesung geben. Die wird so, oh, so more or less half an hour. Stunde dauern. Und danach haben wir ganz and then we have a lot of time for your questions. Das heißt, wenn ihr möchtet, so the link to the zu diesem, fireside, uh, fireside room here. Room. Ich glaub, we have a little more space. A few people can join in. It should be in the file plan, in the schedule. And hopefully people will correct me. No. Okay, it is in the file plan. Great. And you can join right in. You are here with us live. And everyone who cannot come in, there is the stream. And yeah, warm welcome, Andreas. Hello. Hello. Hi. Da bin ich. I'm here. <laughs> wow. Mein Gott, so viel Vorschusslorbeeren so, hoffentlich. Ähm. Such warm words. Ja, sehr verdiente Vorschusslorbeeren. Without also, me having done anything. Waren. Well, you did something already. Ja, ja, stimmt. Ja, ja, stimmt. Yeah, well, I've been sitting here for some time. Genau, magst du vielleicht gerade vorher so, einmal kurz... how long have you been writing? Machst? Have you been doing that? Um, oh, since I've been 12, bin 12 schon like, ein halbes Jahr. Half a century ago. Also unlängst. Well, unlängst, recently. ja. Also je nachdem, wenn man es mit Atlan vergleicht, bin ich nur you compare it to compared to äh, Atlan. Und andererseits ist er kein Schriftsteller, sondern But he's a fictitious <lacht> space hero. Lesen wir uns jetzt gleich was aus NSA, so, National The reading will be from NSA, so National Security Agency, but the German terms for that, so it translates quite nicely. And I also have it digitally on my phone, because I shortened the text. This is my, my oldest, Kindle. Kindle. Because I am someone who doesn't like buying new stuff when the old stuff still works. Also, so es geht it's about um the National Safety or Security Agency. Again, um, the German words, but the translates nicely. Seit es Lord Charles Babbage im Jahr 1851 ist, seine damals noch mit Network. Ohne jedoch dessen für Deutschland It also played a large role in the First World War, in der Republik but it couldn't keep the bad things from happening to Germany. Ebenso die Nutzung der sogenannten Gemeinschaftsmedien, die auch eine wesentliche der NSDAP spielen. Played a huge role in the Weimar Republic and also helped the Nazis in growing. So when the Nazis came, uh, took power. They also took over the agency that had surveillance of the network, and that network could also keep track over all kinds of communications between the um, between the people, so money movements or messagings and the like. 
<laughs> die Regierung Adolf Hitlers hatte das NSA, das the government of Hitler also used the NSA that many people didn't even know existed from the Weimar Republic and they just took it over and didn't change too much. Führte diesen im Hinblick auf die Umgestaltung der Agency. Thought that was because there was magic of the letters. So everyone who knew about the words NSA, um, so the Nazis just assumed that it would be an S agency for National Socialistic and didn't think it had to be changed. So this agency survived the war quite well. But today should be the change it changed. It was uh, 5th October 1942. The sky was as dark as if someone had um, put a grey cloak over it and the windows of the agency looked like um, sharpshooter points. There was almost no one on the streets except for a few cyclists. Docking in their heads. And the windows were barricaded, just to be sure. Three black Mercedes Benz stopped in front of the portal with the wet um, Nazi flag hanging down sadly. A man came from the car, everyone knew him for his brand glasses, Reichsführer Heinrich Himmler, the second powerful man in the world. The portal opened and the vice um, president of the house greeted the guests with Heil Hitler and raising his right arm. I welcome you on behalf of our office. Himmler just nodded shortly. I don't have much time. Don't waste it, he said. The room was dark. A projector showed a sharp image. Was the Bildschirm for Helene Bodenkamp zeigte. The um, ventilator was ventilating, and it was smelling of hot air. A few people were smoking. Our task, Adamek explained is on two levels. The first level is obvious. We have access to all kinds of information and we can use that information in many ways. We can read any text anyone writes and every email sent within the Reich. We can see all the account balances. We can see what news shows people watch and listen to. And of course, we can read all forum discussions, even on closed forums. And that helps us identify people that make comments about the Fura, about the National Socialism that we don't like. Himmler nodded. The problem is the sheer amount and mass of data. We can read any document, but we can, can't read them all. We couldn't do that even, though, even if we had a thousandfold of the um, employees we have. Of course, more employees wouldn't be, impos uh, wouldn't be possible because of the losses at war. So we have computers that 
search also for ein, die wir suspicious terms damit sie uns and we have artificial intelligence to Verstehen, look for relevant results. Das ist die zweite Ebene yes, ihrer Arbeit, die that, erwähnt, was, that seems to be the second level. Adam Adamek shook his Nein, head. No, he said. That's what I'm going to talk about now. Er gab he Rollstuhl pushed his wheelchair to get to der the close to the protector. Alles, wovon ich bisher gesprochen habe, Everything I've Oberfläche talked about der until now is just Macht scratching the surface. The, the power of the computer to interlink data in a way that provides information, that is the second level of our work. And no one could do it like we do. And we would like to present some of that information now. Himmler leaned back and folded his hand. hands. Sure, he said. Go on. Adamak Adamek ließ sich von der unüberhörbaren Skepsis in der wasn't des impressed by the skeptic of the um, Reichsführer. Deswegen saß er Being irritated wasn't es war ein his Jeder hat attire. Die Piste sei gefährlich, doch er hatte sich nicht irritieren lassen. Unser Ansatz verdankt seine Wirksamkeit einer Entscheidung des Führers, Well, our Führer did had a very wise decision, made a very wise decision by abolishing cash money. Effective 1st July 1933, he can only pay by card or by Polk's telephone for convenience. That measure should free us from the Jewish dictation of money and the black market and violent crime and all that. Adamak nodded politely. Those were the Führer's motives, but that wasn't was what motivated us. Because we don't know what everyone is doing. What ev uh, we know what everyone's been doing the past nine years, what they bought. Auf einen Link von Helene Bodenkamp showed a prepared auf, table that, uh, on the protector. Spalten, die lange Nummern enthielten, gefolgt von einem Tagestag, Columns Uhrzeit, and lines containing numbers in Reichsmark. And in Reichsmark. In der Praxis handelt es sich dabei um eine zwar enorm große, aber sehr einfache Tabelle. Simple. Hier sehen wir einen Auszug daraus. Und zwar Here we alle see Einkäufe, die ich selber a very um, Basic information, all purchases I've made in the last year. It includes my um, personal ID number and the accounts the money went to. And the third um, column has um, the article that was bought or a contract number if it was a contract payment. You can see an example of that in a second line. That is my rent. And the last um, line contains the quantity. Our program knitter did good work. Now we have an additional filter. So that only shows the money or the whenever I bought food. Himmler was skeptical. How do you know? How do you know what is food? The numbers all look completely different. Yeah, you can't see that at the numbers. The numbers are just increasing. But whenever a number or an article is added, all the information is in a different table. Miss Bodenkamp, please show the information to the first row of this table. In the new table, you could see everything. It was a Gloria potato. It's food. It's not ration. ID number 100174. Here we have the category. 
So if we want to have further information, we have to check the table of the food. The secretary typed in some commands and another table came up. Description, potato, in general. Unit 100 grams, vitamins and so on, all the information. So we can see the potatoes I bought two weeks ago. They have 700 calories per 100 gram. I bought two kilograms. Might I ask how you know that? Himmler asked. Well, of course, I'm not buying myself. I have a young helper who does that for me. I give him a list and my money card and he does everything else. Himmler was nodding. I understand. Proceed. Adamek was turning around and looked at the picture until he found his, his point again. As I said, I bought two kilograms of potatoes, so 1,540 calories. That calculate, those calculations we can get done by a program. The picture changed upon the note. The table was shown again, this time with just the information of who bought what and when and the calories. Now a new list came up with the name August Adenek, where he lives and when he was born. And underneath there was a list of dates and a number of calories. So August 1942, 2149 calories and further dates and further numbers of calories. This is what I bought and after that ate in the last time. The calorie number is about right. He went a bit to the side. Now, another step to make it more useful. So we are connecting this table to the table of our um, civilian registry. So we get the number of nutrition values per household and then we can divide that by the number of people in a household and then we have a list of all households and how much each house each person in a household is using per month the eyes of the reisführer grew incredibly behind his glasses slowly but they grew he seemed to understand what this was getting to. So for me, this is staying the same because I live alone. For other people, the number will be lower. For example, when there is a baby or a child who, of course, eats less than an adult. Or if a household, an, an average household, is too high for a certain household, then it could be that there is more people living there than should be. For example, people who are hidden from the law. Himmler had his hands folded and rubbed them slowly. That sounds well, but I would, I would like to see a demonstration. Adamek was smiling. His colleagues Seine also Kollegen were smiling. They were prepared. Nothing better than that. Just tell me a city and we will create a list of suspects. Right here, right now, right in front of your eyes. Any city? Any city. Himmler was thinking shortly. Amsterdam. Amsterdam. The smile um, disappeared immediately. Amsterdam. Amsterdam vergewisserte sich Adamek. Is that a problem? Is that a problem? Sagte Himmler. So, for increased tension, I have to take a sip. Helene was sitting in front of the keyboard. She hadn't known any of that. 
Sie hat die Programme, Programme nach Vorgaben, wie sie von Herrn Adamek, von Herrn Lennon, von Herrn Dobryshovsky erhalten hat. Just like always. Genau wie sonst auch. Just like always, she never asked what for. Die Auswertung dienen sollten. Derlei Fragen. Programm knitters were not supposed to ask. Natürlich hatte sie sich Gedanken gemacht. But food, calories, what should she have thought that, that it's about the food situation of the public to find out how people, how food is distributed, where there is enough food, but this, her hands felt as uh, like lead, her stomach was. shuddering. The discussion amongst the men, she wasn't following. Wurde in Amsterdam What? schon bargeldlos bezahlt? Were they still using ja, lautete die Antwort, mehr oder weniger. Coins in Amsterdam? Ja, yeah, well, no. Pretty much Fräulein since Bodenkamp we've been there, not anymore. Fräulein Bodenkamp ist die Adamex. Helene? She's waiting. Helene? 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 Ja, so started, start the analysis. Yeah, of course. Just like any good woman, she was following orders and she was watching her hands, putting in the commands and putting, pushing the enter key. And the tables were growing on the screen. She was, she felt like she could hear the, ta the data streaming and all the fans turning on. As this was happening, Himmel was explaining why Amsterdam. Amsterdam. When our army took the Netherlands and could take a look at the data, we could tell that the city was having tables about the religion of the people already. They were doing it for taxes, but of course it was great for us. Unlike the homeland where we had to put into put a lot of work into it, there we already had a list of all Jews, which made our work a lot easier, of course. Yeah. Yeah, that was a really nice piece of luck. Yeah, we started with the deportations, of course, but because we have that list, we know that we didn't get everyone. For some, it was said that they went into the other countries, but we know that that can't be true. So, if they didn't swim across the sea, they have to be somewhere in the city, somewhere in the city, hidden in the hope that we will go away. He was putting a fist into the air in anger, but we came to stay for a thousand years. Breathless silence was there in face of his anger. Nobody dared move, nobody dared say anything. Everyone was just staring at the number as on the screen that was slowly climbing to 100%. Then it disappeared and a list came up. The first few numbers came up and numbers and calories came up. Wann wieg? 5870 Kalorien pro Tag und Person. Treffer. We had one. Himmler stood up. What does that mean? Was heißt das? These people almost buy three times the amount of that what they can eat themselves. Miss Bodenkamp, please the numbers from the civic tables. Helene felt like there was an incredibly heavy and invisible weight on her, so heavy she could barely breathe. But her hands, the straighters, kept working, typing the commands incredibly fast, and the tables on the screen were filling with further information about the families. The first one was about a childless pair of pair, um, yeah, a childless pair. Where they came from, they came from Austria, where they lived, where they worked. The second one was also a couple, also without children. Four people, four persons who ate together about 25,000 calories. That's pretty much what 10 people or more need. The two women work in the same company. 
Was ist das für eine kind of company is that? Asking his assistant. Again, her finger danced. The firm, the firm uh, and the company was called Hector. Sitz in der 223. He is the address. He is what they work with. They work with uh, pretty much straight with these two traders. Just in December, right after we came there, it changed the owners. That could be just a cover-up. Helene opened the entries. Is that a Dutch name? Her fingers danced over the keyboard. He was, uh, Frank wasn't a Dutch man, but a German Jew. Emigrated to the Netherlands in 1934. He had lived in Merwede Plein with his family and was last seen in 1942 in June. The record said that, according to rumors, the family had fled to Switzerland, or they haven't. Himmler said and whipped out his phone. Get a search command to Prinzenkracht 62 and have it searched. Ja, zwei, Two, six, six, Suchkommandos an folgende Note the following addresses. Er las dem Mann in Amsterdam die Adressen and he dictated the addresses of the weak couple and of the other couple. Report immediately. Dann nahm er sein Telefon und sagte, jetzt heißt es warte. He took away his phone and said, now we wait. So they waited, staring into the silence, letting time pass. Adamek was chewing on his thumb. Litke was twirling his mustache. Finally, after 100 years, at least that was it, what it seems like to Helena, the phone rang. rang. Himmler was listening, and he said, nothing. They found nothing. Helena saw how the men were staring in disbelief. Hopefully, nobody would notice how she was relieved. One moment, said Adamek. Then he went to the stricker and said, he talked to the knitter. I assume we also have the um, building data. Of course, show me the um, building on the map. Müller was uh, looking for a cigarette. He was seeing Himmler, the look in Himmler's face called as ice. Nothing could save her now. The land register entry was shown. Amsterdam has very narrow but very long houses for historical reasons. Please describe what you found in Prinzenkracht 263. The man described exactly what they had seen. It was exactly as on the map. Letko was sweating. We went to the first floor. On the right side, there was a door towards a storage room. At the end of the corridor, a small door towards a library. I went to the second um, to the second floor, back to the small room. What do you see? Well, just some shelves. Not a door? No. They saw it all. Behind the room, there were supposed to be more rooms. It was working, incredible. The tension was incredible. Sturmbandführer described exactly what, um, where uh, the shelves are, opposite the door. See if there's 
a doorknob. We already checked it's fixed to the wall. Assume that it's a rouge. Try again. Hmm. The SS men said, okay. They heard commands and it was silent. Only noises. The phone was picked up again. You were right, the SS men said. There is a hidden door. Very well hidden. Screams in the background. There are several persons behind the door, the SS men said. Arrest them all. Himmler snarled. He could hear commands barked, screaming women and children. The Sturmbahnführer was heard again. We found eight persons, all Jewish. It's supposed to be Otto Frank, his wife, and his two children, Margot and Annie. Ma um, the Van Pelz family with their son, Peter. Send them to Auschwitz immediately, Himmler barked. Himmler interrupted the connection. That's enough. The rest will sort itself out. He paced up and down the room, obviously still in, be, um, in disbelief. Nobody said a word. We're in a dangerous situation in the East. Our fate is on an edge, but the war also has an inside front that is just as important as our tanks on the outside front, and that is about liberating the country from the Jews. He put his phone in his pocket, looked at the employees and said, I, would have, I, I, didn't ex I wouldn't have expected what your work was able to do. I thought you were just some small, meaningless agency. But, gentlemen, you have convinced me. I see that you are fighting at a very important front that is as important as our external war towards the outside. What I saw with you today convinced me that no one will ever be safe from us, nowhere. We will soon have a Reich where minorities no longer exist. Our power will be infinite. Right afterwards, they brought the Reichsführer and his entourage to the cars and saw and watched the black cars go away. Right afterwards, the tension flew into laughter and happiness. They were successful. The NSA would stay what it was. Also, Helene was congratulated how well she worked without any mistake. She was nodding, so like her face was producing the smile that everyone was expecting, accepted the nice words because they were all part of it. She did it automatically because what she all she could talk about was that she just helped to hand over the man she loved more than anything in the world to certain death. And right here, I am telling you, thank you very much for your attention. I assume that the very happy applause and the extreme applause we will have to just imagine right now, technology is not far enough yet. But please don't let us reach 1984 with the screens. But yeah, that's a different that's a different topic now. So yeah, checking the chat, we see a lot of applause. Great. Großartig.
Um, so you just read read that that spot that when I read it way back, really put a stone in my stomach the most because I thought, wow, that's that's insane. That really shows how how difficult this, we have nothing to hide, is. Yeah, it's really harmless data that's collected. Just 77 calories per 100 uh, 100 grams of potatoes can become dangerous. And you really prepared that quite well, how all these data work together and how the combination of data can lead to a very ugly end in this scene now. Do you maybe want to explain or tell a bit about your background knowledge? Where do you have that from? Yeah, so I have a IT and um, I had lessons at some point. I started with DBase back then and was working, and Microsoft Access and was working with databases. I was programming SQL and stuff like that. And um, it was in the mid of the 90s. And back then I had the idea to make, to take part in a course or to provide a course to the topic of data protection. So I was giving courses for databases, how to join and analyze the data. And just the idea of making a course, of giving a course, and usually with database courses, people are typing in data and those are usually addresses and then you get out everyone from Stuttgart and everyone called Müller and you never have a, a large amount of data. Usually, uh, and then I thought you should bring a big database and then give them the task to really look for specific information. And you could use data like you get in a company. For example, data of when people arrive or leave. Because back then that was mostly electronic already, what they eat in their breaks. Because the companies I was working with, most of that was already with electronic payment. And doing that, you could have checked who is always arriving at the same time and what does that probably mean? Are they maybe having an affair or are they living in the same area? Wer ist immer die Schonkost? Was hat das zu sagen? Der, was der für die Krankheit right hier verheimlicht und, und solche Dinge. Und so habe ich das auch rumüberlegt und yeah. ähm, so wollte das. Das war, was ich mir vorgestellt habe. Kurs mit Schwerpunkt. Fokus auf uh, Data Protection. Und wir waren auch das, aber niemand hat es nicht Das hat niemanden interessiert. Das der hat nie stattgefunden. But the basic idea, the basic ideas, rather, are now in that book. So the comparison and analysis of data, of these lists, so that you can abuse data or use data for more than the, it was meant for. So you want to know what, how many calories are in potatoes or the nutritional values of your food. And you want to know how well this food is for you. But if you combine that with bad intentions, then you can get different results. And yeah, combined with changing politics, it can happen quickly, as we could sadly see in different places of the world. So you basically wrote a crossover between Snowden and Nazis. Well, Snowden was the trigger point for that, actually, because when he made his, when he came out, made his revelations, then I met people who I knew or people I was chatting with who said, yeah, well, I also, also thought you go to some page and check hiking boots and the next time I visit Amazon, they are offering hiking boots, so they know what I'm doing, which they probably do. 
Und habe ich yeah, ihm gesagt, ja, ja, das kann alles sein, aber das But those are not bad intentions yet. So Amazon just wants to optimize the advertisement, which might be a legitimate purpose. So they try to give you advertisements that are interesting for you. So they are not trying to give also printed out ads to people who have no use for that. And also when I was working in that in companies, it started that Germany was classified or yeah, it was classified um, the inc by income. So there are rather richer people, you don't, and there are rather poor people, you don't have to have ads there and that's probably still the same i mean we have data protection but that's only by the state companies can still pretty much do what they want and such things and these maps are still available and i was saying that's not the worst that can happen just imagine the nazis would have had uh, might have had our computers from today and then i Oh, was stopping myself and thought, yeah, that might be a good and book. And then I thought some more. And yeah, I kept thinking that. How long did you take planning this book? That was rather quick. Well, for my, for my speed. Because usually such an idea is six years old or older. But that was by rather three years. So yeah, it was rather quick. I already had a lot of material, of course, because about Nazis, you usually have some books in your bookshelf, and I got some more. But it shouldn't really be a book about Nazis. There are others and better books about that, but it's a book about our times. It made a bit more dystopic. So the computers are the focus point and what you can do with them. Yeah, it was surprisingly fast. Once it was clear what the plan was, the characters were also quite nice to write because sometimes when you're writing a character that is creating itself basically and the two main characters Letke and Helene they were basically creating themselves they are plastic they have their own wants and goals and problems and they are creating the book as well. They take over the show. So you just have to think what are their problems and just follow them. And everything is happening quickly. Okay, I'm very curious how you are developing characters, but I have an interesting question from the chat, maybe to that topic. Would it be okay to have the official part of this reading in computer science course? It would fit rather well. Yeah, of course. I show the book as well. So it can serve as an advertisement and yeah, that works for me. Yeah, definitely. You should read it. It's at the same time quite subtle and quite obvious. So you combine that. Well, yeah, and I did want to make it obvious. So it's not a bad word in my context because the topic is, is one where you can get out the big hammer and you shouldn't be too subtle. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you really wish for the big hammer. One question was, what would that look like today? Because now we have mobility data, media data, contact data. Do you have an idea? How would you do that today in a context that's not 1942, but today? 
Oh, um, I haven't really so thought about so, that. Uh, Had to do that today because the political situation is important about that. Because right now we are in a democracy, we are allowed to do pretty much what we want and think what we want, but that can change. It could become extreme left, could become extreme right, or extremely religious government. And the problem is that that works backwards because all the data is still available. So if the right-wing people get power, they can check Twitter. Who said anything against us in the past? And the left and the religious people, of course, are the same. All those who exactly know what God wants or destiny or whatever, everyone who really knows things for a fact, they have no mercy because they are certain and they can fight anyone who does not fit their worldview. And that's a problem with data. So I'm happy about all websites that disappear again. But the big data blocks, there are numbers about all the data uh, an average American produces per day, and that's crazy. It's, it's an insane amount. And Google and Facebook, they are collecting all of that, and the NSA also, for sure. And then the data is just there and is waiting to be abused. Just like religious people might check the church taxes from Amsterdam. And yeah, that was a simple list back then. Yeah, another thing. Um, putting it extra. Yeah, the program NITTE, some people like that term, so as an extra topic, you, well, you had certain role models in that book that women were the mechanics and the engineers and men are the users and those who draw the conclusions. That, yeah, that provide the direction and all that. Yeah, that has two backgrounds. One is, uh, well, thematically caused to make it more plausible because I want to have it realistic. So, yeah, it's a mechanical engineered computer using um, punch cards, steam operators and all that. And... Well, the inventor of uh, that um, constructed that machine had um, a friend, um, Ada Lovelace, who wrote the programs. And she thought even further than the inventor because she was already thinking tables and geographical data and insurance and all that. So she already knew that what you can do with the numbers. So she already predicted digitalization. So with that um, labor division, men uh, do the hardware and women do the software. And uh, the combination with Ada Lovelace, um, that was my inspiration. But also uh, during my studies um, at the Fraunhofer Institute, where I worked as a research assistant, we had women who programmed, and that was something remarkable back then. So, yeah, that was working against the stereotypes. But I, I thought what they were doing was pretty neat. One of them um, built some C routines that I even copied. I used them for a long time. And what was special about that? 
When men program, they always want to show off and show how special they are. And women are way better at um, programming without the added ego, or at least that's my opinion. And I would have loved to hire women for my um, enterprise if I had had the possibility. Ja, die haben halt programmiert, weil sie es für ihre Diplomarbeit und so gebraucht haben. Und, und But that was impossible. There weren't any candidates. So. Also, also da war nicht so die, diese Erotik des Computers war da nicht ausgeprägt genug. Um yeah, zu they just didn't find computers <lacht> fascinating enough, gedacht, I guess. But, in an, in an yeah, that is also kind of an homage to those women who... Yeah. Yeah, that sounds great. Großartig. Also in dieser Diktion Code is Poetry bin ich persönlich ja bei Vogonisch gelandet, aber um, mehr als mehr als mehr als mehr als mehr als mehr als Yeah, the, I was talking, uh, I was thinking Vogonic, but many people can't estimate that. Wir haben eine weitere spannende Frage. Well, we have an interesting question coming in. How do you do your research, especially about the future? Other than what you know from your studies, do you ask people who know about the subject? And how do you make the story plausible? Yeah, the research. It's kind of like, yeah, it's like the um, work you have to do. You list the questions, list the topics that you don't know about, and then you try to fill in the gaps. If you don't have books on it, which I often have because, um, yeah, I write about topics that I like anyway, so I have my literature about that. But if I don't, I do my research on books. Maybe I buy one or two books, or I borrow them. When I didn't have that much money, I always borrowed my books. Now I'm able to buy them. Also, the library is far away. And I don't want to rely on Mr. Bezos. The audio is very bad, sorry. I don't have to know what the weather it was like in 1973 in New York. You won't uh, find that information um, in a book, but on the internet maybe. Also, um, conspiracy theories. Internet genial. That it, the internet is the place for that. But, uh, well, the quality of conspiracy theories is declining by the day. Well, so first I do my homework, and then if I still have questions, I look for experts. Which I often postpone because, well, I'm not the most social type. And B, I'm convinced that you need to do your homework before you pester experts and high, highly doted scientists. So I don't want to be calling, I don't know, a Nobel Prize laureate and have no idea what I'm even talking about. So I really take my research seriously. Because, yeah, you just have to. 
Also It's the same with Google traveling. Ja wie Schriftsteller gemacht. Google Street View is ideal for writers because you can get uh, an impression of uh, places, what it looks like, and then you can connect um, that to you, your own impressions from your own travels. But Yeah, uh, booking a trip to Australia and then finding out, well, well, the scenery isn't that good. Good. I won't use that. We don't want to have that. So, because sometimes describing the scenery is completely useless for the plot. So, yeah, you need to be economic even in research. Yeah, but that uh, is true. The ratio between planning research. Where are you positioned at? Yeah, I tend to do less research than I should and just write. Irgendwo im Hinterkopf dann doch irgendwelche Informationen sind. Aber dann dann, I'm always äh, counting on my inspiration äh, and my muses äh, to um, give me the right input. Dieselmotoren vergasen und der Stelle, das ist mir schon, ich glaube, 50 Mal vorgeworfen worden. Mailed. Und das war. Ja, yeah, but that denke, also leads to mistakes. So, for example, <lacht> when I use the wrong part of a motor to the wrong kind of fuel. In der Nähe, wo meine Eltern wohnen, da wurde versucht, really against that. Mit Diesel. And also die yeah, Person hat auch nicht recherchiert. Like this person, this other author was having a um, coffee mobile with Diesel. Eine, um, so this author had no idea beim, either. Uh, zum Bereich Schreibstil. Mm. So your style, are you changing, are you inventing yourself a new? Or why is your style changing? Magst du direkt da oder magst du den Rest von dem, was da jetzt so, noch ganz viel in Klammern ist? Do you want to answer directly or the implied questions? Ich habe dir bloß aus dem Augenwinkel gesehen, was dann... Also ich kann was dazu sagen, so das, 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 das findet sich so neu. Das reinventing yourself. Cool, that sounds great if you hear that Zeit about so someone. Bob Dylan, Dylan reinvents himself. Mit uh, Album neu. Also Bob Dylan I mean, ist he is basically a colleague of mine. Also, wenn man einen Literaturnobelpreis kriegen kann, dann... Uh, if you can get a literature Nobel Prize, then you are a colleague, um, right? Aber... But, This is nicht nothing you also plan. You don't sit down and say, I have to reinvent myself. Es ist einfach so, It's just that um, I always try to do the story justice. That means uh, das heißt, I have halt very different ideas and I invent quite different stories because I just can't bring myself to write the same story several times because that would get boring. Und, 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 and die sind they halt just are different. Das ist so, That's just in my DNA. DNA drin, wenn ich in seine Buch If Hülma, one ist book es hot und says A, the other has to say B. So I always find a new direction so that's diametral to uh, the previous one. Steht. And so the next one will, yeah, I have a 20 dimensional um, storytelling so space. But it doesn't really feel like I'm trying to do something different. I just have ideas and I try to do them justice. But of course, the storytelling is important as well. Sometimes it's someone who says I and thinks a lot. Sometimes the character is a bit more formal. Sometimes the character is wild. So there is the story from the perspective of a 3,000-year-old Englishman. And yeah. So he is referencing Harry Roden now. This is a very long-running German science fiction story that happens in small monthly episodes. And of course, that is a very kind of a very different kind of story if you have a 3000 year old Englishman or if you have a modern day German. And yeah, there was also the other story about humans who have wings and live in giant trees. 
das hat and that's basically so the opposite of technology okay. and you have to tell that story sein. differently right do you want to spoil that story a little for us also um, well my editor is saying whenever he gets a new whenever he gets a new manuscript well that's something completely different now so the wings of a person it plays in a, far, a future far away in a galaxy far away on a forgotten planet and there, there are people living there and humans who have wings and they know why because their ancestors who came to that planet gave them the wings genetically because the ground is dangerous and almost everywhere if you touch the ground it can happen that you die you don't know why the ancestors also couldn't know, figure out why but at some point they said, well, let's just give our children wings. And from that point on, they had wings and were living in the skies and said, we don't care about the ground anymore. But not only the ground is inaccessible, but also the sky. The sky is a closed cloud cover. They don't have a word for the sun. It's the big skylight and the moon is the big... Um, light of the night, so there's the light of the day and the light of the night, but then someone wants to know what the stars look like, and you know the ancestors came from the stars, and there must be lights up there, and he wants to see that with his own eyes. And the book of the story then follows that and it has dramatic, dramatic um, yeah, implications. And yeah, it's many thousand pages and well, it feels like many thousand pages, but I always get the reaction. Yeah, it's way too short. So it apparently it reads quite quickly. So we yeah, have yeah, a, a lot more know. questions. Yeah, good. I've been open or open. Perfect. <laughs> um, How do you handle writing your books? Are you first creating ide uh, collecting ideas? Are you first creating the characters? Are you writing a short version or are you just going into it? Well, no, I'm not jumping into it. I don't know who does that. I'm first collecting ideas. You see, it takes quite a long time. And then I remember, ah, there was this one... I thought something about that, and this idea just had to fit quite well. But then I combine those ideas, I write them together, and then that starts to collect marks. And then at some point there are so many ideas on one in one spot that I have no choice but to make a book out of it. And then it's back and forth. I think about what could happen and then what character would belong there or the other way around. I start with the characters and then, yeah, what's happening? What's the beginning? What's happening in the end? What are the twists that have to happen? So I have a scheme or a landscape in my head, how the story should happen. It should, I have to say, because it almost never works the way you imagine it. But I still need a plan. And yeah. I have a feeling how it should be, and it works differently, but it's still okay. Sometimes you have to stop and plan things anew because it doesn't work the way you want it to, and it couldn't work, and you always have to reconsider. Um, did I maybe take a wrong turn somewhere? Am I in a dead end? And then you have to change something and go back and maybe throw something away. Um, but yeah, basically it works. So I can follow these ideas. It's not painting by numbers. That wouldn't be fun. <laughs> and this book you have, is that one where you just collect stories for all the books? Or is it one book, one little notebook for each? 
So is it something you always have with you when you're on the road? No, I always have something to write with me, but there is an official notebook for ideas and that there was oh, more ideas than I have years to live left. If there was a natural law that an author could only die if they had run out of ideas, I would have get to 300 or something. Yeah, maybe then the Greek thinkers would be still alive. Yeah, maybe. Or the French ones or the old German ones. Um, I just had to check when the book with the humans with the wings came out. That was October, right? Yes. Do you want to tell us what you are working on right now? An, uh, an young an adult book Roman, that comes out soon den... next year i think but oh, jetzt noch nicht. i don't have to say anything about it because i don't really like that first you should read what's available and everything else can come later so if someone comes here without knowing your work they are busy for a while yep that's how it should be so i have to check again Right. Ah, so a question I forgot Frage was repeated. Sorry. <laughs> Hello, um, Andreas. Hello, Andreas. Some um, of your books do not end well for uh, the protagonist. Pro uh, <laughs> How do you feel about that? Uh, one, or the, the one or the other ending was having me quite excited. Yeah, well, not excited. Like Disturbed? Well, that doesn't have to be a negative thing. It depends on the story. I gotta say, Winnetou also dies in book four. Can I say that now? That's a spoiler. In the moment when you read it, you are shocked, of course. But some decades later, you say, well, that's just how it is. That's the logic of the story. And what you can cri critique is in the billion dollar, where the, he the hero also suffers in the end, but that's a symbol that they... So they inherit one billion dollar which back then which was actually in the 11th of september 2001 back then it was a lot of money and he's inheriting not only the money but also the prophecy that he will save humanity's fate with that money and he's breaking down during the book and that's a symbol for well that it, it's not only nice if you inherit a billion yeah it can become difficult a perry roden fan is asking when is a guest book coming because perry roden is always written by different authors as well yeah, those Perry Roden fans, they are never happy. I just brought out a thousand page book that is ten little ones. And I promised that I will write the last one, the last book of the next cycle. That is book uh, 1000 something. I didn't get the number, sorry. Yeah, we'll just leave it at that. Um, yeah, I'm also curious what I talk myself into there. Yeah, I'm just scrolling up a little if I missed something else. And indeed, there is something. They are asking... If you read The Three Sons from Liu, and did you like it? No, I have not read it. Uh, the English title is The Three Body Problem. It is a rather big book, and I read a lot of books that you should have read, not yet. 
einer der oft erst Jahre And I'm someone who is often a few years behind in reading something that other people forgot by then. So I'm not reading current titles usually. Es kommt was raus von einem von einem Autor, den ich Sometimes there is something new that I really have to read, but that's an exception. Okay. Das beruhigt mich gerade ein bisschen. Oh, that, that's nice to hear because my to read uh, list is growing and growing. Do you have maybe questions for the listeners or watchers? No, I'm in the answer mode. I don't have questions. Here's yes, a comment from the translator. I also have a ever-growing to-read book. Book list. Yeah, so another thing. Great. Thank you. My kids also love your books and are always asking for a new one. Yeah, I really like it when kids are reading. And I like it when men are reading as well. Because that is a truism that 80% of books are read by women. A study said, for me, it's 50%. So 50% men. I like that. That's balanced. Not, you know, not just for me, but also for, for the men, because for the, for the men, also, men are not reading men enough, especially not enough novels. novels. Uh, whenever someone says, I'm not reading anything that's thought of, or that's just, just wasting time, I, I'm shuddering, and that's just not true. Because these novels, they are not just thought up. Of course, some are, but the good ones, the good ones, they can tell you things that non-fiction books cannot tell you. You only live in half if you're not reading. Oh, that's a nice way of putting it. Yeah, so I have one question I really, really, really need to ask. I'm not just a listener and sometimes buyer, but also the books, especially NSA, there is a message, right? So with these fiction, fictitious stories with so, so much in there, you can give that to people to also provide a topic to them. Because if you are just on the factual layer, it doesn't work, but the gift giving of books and also maybe not the copyright working, so not the proper copyright proper way of gifting books. Isn't that also nice for you as an author if I give away books to someone when I think you need this book, I give it to you. What do you think? Is it more important to gain a new reader or to keep the copyright? Well, I'm a bit split about that. Because on the one hand, I'm living, that's my livelihood. As an author, you are, you gain your, in, gain your income by the money that people pay. He calls it the purse or money purse price, and that's more important than any other price, and that's the price that you win or the award that you win by your readers, by every single one who is getting the book. And whenever you get a book in your hands, you pick up a book and you say, ah, I know that author, I'll buy that, that's the money purse price or award. And that's paying for the bookshops and the publishers and, of course, the author as well. So if you don't get that, so even if they read a book of mine and they don't recognize me, that's bad for me. So that's that aspect. The author has to live from something and he lives by having fans who are waiting for the next book and are collecting money for him to be able to buy uh, to write the book. And of course, yeah, there were libraries since forever, basically. And 
everyone who is an author used the libraries in his youth. And I was reading everything I could get my hands on. And I could not have been, I could not have paid for all that. And my parents also didn't really buy books. That was not a thing. A few were there that came from somewhere. But buying a book, that was something I invented. That entering a bookstore. <laughs> so back then, when you could get a, a small book for 2 mark 80, <laughs> a paperback book, that would be around 2 euro, maybe, or 150. Yeah, what many people don't know, that an author also gets money if a book gets checked out heißt, in a library. Um, also so, if the library card is cheap, that's also something you can also support your uh, favorite also, authors. Also, also, And yeah, of course, I'm not against libraries. The Darknet is not paying me anything for, uh, for downloads. For downloads. Um, this, whatever they are getting, they keep. But libraries and, and also books for blind people, I'm not getting anything, but that's a different story. Hmm. So fair use rules are a different story. That's maybe also not an important topic anymore now that audiobooks are a thing. But I remember books for blind people, it's very thick with Braille. Hmm. Yeah, another fascinating question. Were you always close to CCC because of your computer science background? Was that a new thing because of research? Oh, I don't really know when I first heard of CCC, but it's been a long time. It was something where you already were interested in computers. And back then, you had to know that the CCC existed, which is also due to the cleverly chosen name. I mean, Chaos Computer Club, everyone can imagine something. Everyone who is into computers, then. But yeah, every now and then I was checking the website, but I wasn't too connected. And I was checking it out in research when it was about voting machines and why you shouldn't use them. I mean, Americans are seeing right now why you shouldn't, but they don't get it. Chaos Computer Club, yeah, herrlich viel Material. And the Chaos Computer Club provide a lot of material for that. Und, und and all the demonstrations, how to in, in 60 in convert a voting <laughs> machine into a chess computer in 60 seconds, um, stuff like that. I learned a lot from that. Yeah, that's nice to hear. I also, well, I have to think, but I think there's some Datenschleuder archive. Datenschleuder is our CCC magazine. This is some very good reading material for rainy days. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, ich noch, uh, so, ein, um, an NSA reference. reference. Uh, in uh, ja so, um, the, the, well, the spirit is out of the bottle, the genie is out of the bottle with um, Rasta um, persecution. Do you think um, the effects could have been stopped in your story? Yeah, I didn't think about that when writing the stories because um, it would have been had to, uh, it would have had to be established first I think dictatorships as after they've been established successfully they can only be taken down from the inside Hitler would have died and maybe his follower wouldn't have been that good. We can see that in other right-wing parties, those aren't the sharpest tools in the shed and difficult to keep in line. 
Um, so, yeah, because of corruption, power corrupts, it's always been like that. And then maybe 50 years later, a situation would have arisen where the team spirit uh, would have been down and yeah, because dictatorship also isn't the very best form of government. Yeah, and then the situation would have arisen where, well, that would be another novel how the dictatorship would have collapsed, the computer dictatorship and how it could have been stopped. And of course, insiders would have had a key role that use their, uh, the power against the leaders of the party. Yeah, that would be a whole other novel, but I don't think that I'm going to write that. This was, would take us back to the Snowden reference, right? Yeah. Well, my novel doesn't um, provide an alternative universe. There are novels that do, but mine isn't one of them. This isn't a parallel universe, but it's just a call for attention, a call for awareness. So it isn't a parallel universe I would be interested in following up with. Because uh, writing about the Nazi era, that's just not my thing. All of the details, the research, all the details about how they treat a people that is, that's not something I would be very pleased to go into, but maybe someone could steal the idea, I don't know. All right. <laughs> Um, vielleicht gleich, uh, so Just a follow-up yeah, question. Um, wie du die What Zukunft do you think of the future of data protection? Will citizens become more and more transparent? And what is your position? Well, transparent citizens, yeah, I do believe that this is the case. Because apparently, which is collecting and collecting data and not finding anything. I think quite the contrary, that we're getting a generation that is growing, that um, feels protected by being watched because they know that um, if I lose my phone, I'd be lost. And no one will look after me. So that is um, the mindset that is being created by that those technologies. So I don't, yeah, I think that we'll go in that direction. And for myself, I protect myself best as I can. Weiß ich gar nicht so. Also wenn um, man kann ja auch Leute, die jetzt nur People who only send encrypted emails are becoming suspicious on their own because uh, that creates an interest. Why would they do that? Let's look into that from uh, thinking from the state side. I'm talking corporations. It also has the aspect, well, that we don't know how, uh, what percentage is company and what percentage goes to other agencies like our famous NSA. And I think you can safely assume that the data goes to the NSA. So how can you protect yourself? Sorry, bad audio. Uh, he, uh, well, I don't have Facebook, 
People tell me download the app. And I say I don't have such a thing. If I go out, I'm offline. If I go to the city, no one knows where I am. I'm still alive. What you need it. You need to register. And if you need to register, I don't use it. Because in France, they're also... You can only register for some doctors with an app, and otherwise you don't um, get an appointment. That would be my personal nightmare. Yeah, this is, yeah I used to have a cell phone way back when that was um, like in the 90s when that was still a brick. I think it was a Sony Ericsson. Only 200 gram. <laughs> and, uh, and children were looking at you funny when you used it on the tram. But I gave it away in 96 and I was glad to do so. I was glad to be rid of it. Stupid thing. <laughs> I hate being on the phone, so why should I have a phone on my person all the time? That's great. And I completely understand you. I so get you. So, a lot of info about the Datenschleuder has appeared. So, you can... <laughs> you can uh, download them and look at them uh, and also you have that in the um, Swabian Embassy's library in Stuttgart. Interesting. And they're also working on an archive. So, do you watch TV? Any shows? No, I don't have a TV. I do watch some um, series, uh, some shows on DVD like Game of Thrones, Breaking Bad. But I, well, I do follow it with an interest, like reports about series uh, about TV shows, because they finally are achieving somewhat like um, making a movie out of a novel because you can't really make a movie out of a novel for dramaturgic reasons because of all the complex plot strings in a novel that's hard to put in a movie. Um, and TV shows can follow along with that, while um, for, uh, movies based on books are basically short stories. But I haven't had a TV in like almost 30 years. Well, yeah, um, you have a good reason for that. Yeah, I can live with that. But actually, I'm at, when I'm at hotel rooms, I do watch some TV because my, my, my arm almost automatically reaches for the remote. Yeah. Perhaps designed, yeah. Um, talking about TV shows, you do have a lot of time to build your characters, and that also makes them so fascinating. Okay. okay, I think we'll call it quits. Um, slowly. Yeah, just uh, one question I'm seeing right now. What am I more afraid of, companies or the state surveillance? Of course, the state surveillance. Amazon, Google, they won't um, send me someone who will kick in my door early in the morning and drag me into a car and I'm never heard of again. But states, countries, they do that all the time, every night, all over the world. People just disappear, never reappear. So states, states are the real criminals. The 
worst criminals. They killed more than two million people in uh, the ninth in the twentieth century alone. Put them in gulags and concentration camps. So sometimes they're tamer. Sometimes they're incompetent. But there's always the potential. I think a very dangerous part of that is when state actors buy shares of companies to use them for their own purposes, because we've seen that in recent times. Yeah. Nothing can protect you from that. Because, sorry, bad audio. Because um, you used to say, well, um, the government doesn't understand the internet or it doesn't know how to use the media, but you can't count on that. Yeah. It's hard to know uh, what's going on. <laughs> what book of yours would be the best suited for a TV show? So I now have to pay close attention to what I'm saying, but um, some, some of them would be suited. Would you have um, one of your books made into a movie? Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking of it all the time time but um, no, uh, nothing ever comes of it I'm not against um, it but yeah. with uh, the coronavirus it's not getting any easier yeah let's wait for better weather um, Okay, for now the state, the federal system is helping. Yeah, it can have advantages. So further hints to the three body problem. Yes, 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 I'm reading them, I'm reading them. <laughs> Also read the free excerpt. It's a nice thing. I have to read it, but it takes time. Yeah, well, it's still on my to read tower as well. Yeah, not yet. It's just on in my shopping cart at Amazon. Well, at least. So, any more questions? People are typing. And yeah, let me say a big, big, big thank you again for the reading of this very difficult scene, this very troubling scene, and this very well illustrating scene that illustrates well what the problem is. Ah, guck mal. Where are you buying books? France and German books is difficult. Yeah, this is really. Also, it's yeah, so France and books in general. Sure. Um, they are terribly expensive here as well. We can't imagine in Germany how expensive books can be. Yeah, I am ordering at Mr. Bezos. Well, but the other way around, it's also difficult. Buying French books in Germany, that's also. Um, eh. Amazon with Amazon accounts. Muss man auch in diesen Paketen mit dem Grinsen schicken lassen, ja. Yeah, yeah the packets with a smile. Yeah. There are advantages hat, and disadvantages, you have to say. And as an author, to avoid Amazon, it's basically it's difficult to impossible because it is a huge market as well. Yeah, I mean, yeah, honestly, what would we do? If Mr. Bezos would say tomorrow, yeah, let's close down the shop. Yeah, but actually, also now, with the beginning of Corona, start of 2020, that small bookshops, they could also 
get things done. They were starting and maybe it would also help us as well to get things going. So there is still hope. So there is a lot of thanks in the chat. Oh, here for oh, somebody promises the uh, the money purse award. Thanks. Genau, von yeah, mir weiterhin, äh, also der, der, den Anfang des großen Still Tages hatte ich ja gerade schon. Thank you, thank you for taking the time, for all the questions, for all the questions as well. Yeah. Thank you for the questions, everyone in the room. Genau, und ja, dann äh, wünsche ich euch noch einen schönen Enjoy the Congress. Congress. Ich mir also you sent me access. I just, I don't know, between the years, it's difficult Haken. to find time. <laughs> yeah, it's all okay. <laughs> well, hopefully soon in a physical congress, whenever it's possible again, meet, we meet in person. Yeah, though Christmas is, the holidays are not the perfect timing for me. <laughs> Because right before New Year's, right before the end, I'm... I'm usually right at the end of writing a book that I have to hand in in January, and I'm always late, of course. But your editor is waiting for it, and in the end it's too short again, right? Yeah, probably. <laughs> Great. So, thank you very, very much. The other angels or heralds, do you want to say something as well? Before? Say goodbye. Nobody wants. All this internet is janky. The world net. Winking. No, winking is different. Um, <laughs> waving. It was about half an hour longer now, and they were given permission for an hour longer. So. The, there's always space in the internet. Yeah, thank you again. And enjoy your evening. And see you soon. Tschüss. So.